We will start by talking about the boost control solenoid. The part number from AEM is 30-2400, but other solenoids may work. The instructions are shown here, but can also be found on AEM's website. Here is a list of what the kit contains, operating voltage, operating frequency, duty range, and max pressure. These things will become relevant later in the video. The electrical connection portion will explain how to wire in the solenoid. One wire will go to ground, and the other will go to PW2 output on your ECU. It doesn't matter which wire goes where. Scrolling down will show you how to properly run your vacuum lines for both internal and external wastegates. If you have dual external wastegates like me, you can follow the external wastegate diagram and put a splitter on the top and bottom hose in order to run lines to both gates. Next we will go over some of the boost control options located in the boost tab found at the top. Fuel cut load is the boost pressure at which you want the ECU to cut fuel and prevent an overboost condition. When you're done tuning, set this number a few psi above the maximum boost pressure you will be running. Next is the maximum and minimum duty range. As I pointed out in the AAM solenoid instructions, the maximum duty range for this solenoid is 90% and the minimum is 10. Go ahead and set that to the correct setting. The next option allows you to select where you wired your solenoid to. The instructions said to wire it to the output called PW2, so that is the option you will want to select. The positive feedback value will be the maximum correction limit for boost pressure that is lower than your desired boost pressure, and the negative feedback value is vice versa. So in other words, this is the maximum correction you're allowing your ECU to do in order to maintain your desired boost pressure. I would recommend setting these percentages between 10 and 20. Next is the pro gain and integral gain. We will leave these two values at zero and allow the boost air duty table to stabilize the boost. The boost wastegate frequency that AM solenoid calls for is 31 Hz. The default setting AM base maps come with is what you see here. I have left it at this without issues, but you can try setting it to 31,000 if you like. AM gives you the option of wiring in a switch that you can use for alternate boost targets. The boost switch target can be set to a higher or lower boost and your target will jump to this number if you are using the switch. The switch input will have to be selected to the correct setting depending on how you wired it in. You will have to find your ECU pinout and determine what pin or switch to use and whether to activate it with 12 volts or ground. The next step would be to zero out all the tables I am showing. Make sure to also check the advanced boost tab to make sure that the tables there are also zeroed out. Now go back to the boost tab and let's focus on the boost wastegate base duty table. I like to start off by setting this entire table to 50. This may not make sense right now, but hopefully I can make sense of it a little bit later. The table basically tells the solenoid at what duty cycle to operate, but that duty cycle will be modified by other tables. The boost target comp table is the most crucial table. It works very similar to the idle percent versus target table that I teach you to use in my other video. This table is a modifier of the previous table we set up. Start off by setting the table to minus 50. Now we are theoretically telling the solenoid to operate at 0% duty cycle. The solenoid minimum duty we set was 10%, so we'll actually operate at 10. So you can set it to minus 40 and do a test run with your car and see how much boost it makes. Because this is such a low duty cycle, the solenoid will be allowing most of the air to pass through and open your wastegate. This test run will most likely make the boost pressure that is set by the size of your wastegate spring. Slowly keep selecting the entire graph and raising the duty cycle. Remember this is based off of your base table. So next maybe try minus 35. Your actual duty cycle will be 50 minus 35 which is 15%. And please make sure you're only doing this if your fuel and ignition map is properly tuned so you'll not damage your engine if you slightly overboost. Let's say you have a 1 bar wastegate spring which is 14.7 psi. Keep raising your duty cycle and doing test runs until you start making boost that's over 14.7. If you make 16 psi and your duty cycle is 20% then you know that you make 16 psi at 20% duty cycle. So go over to the 16 psi in the table and set that point to minus 30 since 50 minus 30 is 20 percent. Now you'll have to go over to one of your target tables to set target boost. I like to use the boost target by vehicle speed table for tuning. 
This table can now be used to set whatever boost you want to run. If you set your target boost to 14 PSI, it will use the target comp table to determine how much duty cycle to run. If you want to run 16 PSI, set your vehicle speed table to 16, and your target comp table will tell it that it has to raise a duty cycle to 20% in order to run 16 PSI. Now let's continue. Set the boost target by vehicle speed table to 20 PSI, and then go over to the target comp table and raise the 20 PSI portion to, let's say, minus 20, so that you're now at 30% duty cycle. Since we don't exactly have a 20 PSI line mark, you kind of have to use your judgment and guess what that 20 PSI might be and adjust it accordingly. Do a test run in your car and see how much boost you make. Let's pretend that you made 24 PSI after your test run. So now you go to the 24 PSI portion of that target comp table and set that point to minus 20 instead of the 20 PSI point. You can now interpolate in between the two points you are sure about by pressing H. Now go back to your boost target by vehicle speed table and you should now have accurate boost control from 14 to 24 PSI. Give it a shot. Set the entire boost target by vehicle speed table to 18 PSI and see if you can actually get 18 PSI. It should be very close. If not, adjust your target comp table slightly. Setting the table to 24 PSI will tell the ECU to look somewhere in between uh, the two following points here. And in between there, it will calculate how much duty cycle to run to get that 24 PSI. One thing that makes uh, tuning boost easier is by logging the runs that you do. And you can make sure you log in the right parameters by going to logging and then ECU logging setup. And make sure you log in at least the boost target and as well as the boost wastegate one out then you could look at these two parameters and see if you're meeting your targets and also the engine load which will tell you the boost that you're currently making or you can do a PC log found at the bottom right corner and this will log the screen that you're currently looking at one of the last tables we will look at is the boost error duty table this table helps correct for any small errors that will occur in your desired boost if you're a few PSI under your target, this table can help add some duty cycle to the solenoid, and if you're above your target, it will subtract some duty cycle. I like to start off like this and adjust the table until I get a steady boost in my logs. Don't make this table have very large changes, otherwise you will see oscillation in your boost pressure as the ECU is fighting to get the correct boost. You can set your desired boost a few different ways. In the Advanced Boost tab, you can find all the tables that you can use to set your boost target. You no longer have to adjust any other tables besides these. Use any of the tables here, but keep in mind that the tables add on each other. So if you set 14 PSI across the board on the Vehicle Speed table, and set 14 PSI in the TPS table, you will end up with 28 PSI. As of right now, I would stay away from the Boost Target by RPM and Boost Target by Gear tables. I have encountered some glitches using the Boost by Gear, that resulted in overboosting. Fairly soon there will be a firmware update and it should fix this issue.